To put this talk into context, behind me is a short clip of what a sea bin is. Essentially, it's a pool skimmer for marinas. It collects plastics, microplastics, oil, even microfibers before they enter the ocean. Plastic pollution is an everybody's problem. Sea bins alone will not save the oceans. Education, science, technology, community activation, legislation, collaborations, partnerships. This is what we're doing to help save our oceans. People are taking notice. The governments are taking notice, but it's quite slow. Glacial speed is the best description, what I've heard for that. My first real job was a product designer, and the main work was to design toasters, kettles, kitchen appliances, all that like, really fun stuff. And uh, it was a bit disheartening because everything we designed was, it was products that were never designed to be repaired. It was cheaper to buy a new one than to fix it. So I finished this job and I went on to build racing yachts, which are rich people's toys that are toxic for the environment and will never break down. I met my co-founder, Andrew Turton, and he told me about the CBN idea and he, he needed assistance. And for me, this was like the light bulb moment. You know, this was something that could benefit others and not just myself. So I saved all my money, I renovated a warehouse, and I soon realized that starting a business costs a lot of money, and my life savings are running out. So we created a crowdfunding campaign, and after a few weeks, we realized that we only had 15,000 euros out of a 150,000 euro goal, and things were looking pretty grim. If we didn't make our target, if we were one cent short, we would get a big fat zero. And the campaign, it, it didn't get much traction until this French guy posted our video onto his blog and from overnight it went from 7,000 views to 11 million views. Mainstream social media then picked it up and shared it. And to this day we have around, well, we have over a billion views of our video because this was the unicorn moment that people had been waiting to see. A few days before our deadline, my computer mouse stopped working and I, I went to buy a new one and I realized I had zero dollars in the bank. I was minus. So I freaked out and I went home and I was like going through my clothes and my pockets and uh, I found $12 in change. I went and bought a new computer mouse for $8 and I bought a bottle of wine for $4. <laughs> the next day, we actually made our goal and we had our startup. The saying goes, not my first rodeo, but in, in this instance, it was very much the case because I've never owned a business before, let alone a business with a global footprint. So. On a daily basis, I'm the guy in the room that's asking all the stupid questions and I'm Googling all the big business words. But I've also found that a little bit of common sense can go a long way. I read a book called uh, Let My People Go Surfing by Yvonne Chouinard. He's the founder of Patagonia. And he talks about flexibility in the workplace, paid days off, uh, having a life outside of work, and, and building employees' pride. And my first thought was, I'm going to be like that guy. But the one thing that really stuck out to me was, was to do more than what was expected, because this was something I wanted for our business, was to do more than what was expected of us and to build a community. And one of the responsibilities of crowdfunding was to show that we just didn't take the money and run. Uh, we, we didn't go to Tahiti and go surfing and drink cocktails on the beach all day. So we had to show a transparency of what we were doing with everybody's money that they'd given us. 
So we showed the ups and the downs and we connected to everyday normal people. And we built a community which numbers 150,000 and it grows every single day. We created a monster and you know, now is the time to like hold on and ride it out. So one of the results from this viral video was criticism from the general public. And for me, this was really hard to understand because this was a product that could do good for the environment. The comments range from sea bins will not save the world, sea bins are going to suck in all the plankton in a marina, and then the whales are going to starve to death. Sea bins suck. And we understood that people have concerns and they need to be addressed. We hired a marine scientist, which would able, uh, enable us to address these concerns. It would also address the real solution, which is education. Because we need to turn off the tap first if we're ever going to clean up our oceans. Essentially, we're working to do ourselves out of business, but it's cool because we'll just go and do something else. Who here owns a phone? Who here drives a car or uses public transport? Who has a computer? I have four or five. <laughs> All of this is made with plastic because plastic, it's an amazing thing. It's just too advanced for us because we're only just learning how to use plastic properly. Right now is a tipping point in a transitional period. Have you ever seen tradies at the supermarket? They're using reusable shopping bags. You got people in the audience or people on the street using reusable water bottles. There are children lecturing their parents about plastic straws and sea turtles. How many people have been caught short in the supermarket? You had to buy a, a plastic shopping bag and then you felt guilty about it. I've done it heaps of times. This is all signs of change. This is every day social media comes up with a new invention or a, or a new technology that is a game changer or it could be a game changer for the environment. So for me, things are looking up for the oceans and you can probably tell that I'm an optimist as well. But my optimism stems from solutions because we don't concentrate on pointing the finger at people or, or blaming people. We concentrate our energy on taking responsibility for our own actions and then taking action. I mean, who is to blame for this plastic bottle that is in the water? The company who made it? The consumer who bought it? Was it put in a bin? Did it fly out of landfill? Did somebody simply drop it on the ground and walk away? Imagine if we demanded alternatives to plastic straws. Nobody would buy them. What company is going to produce a product that nobody wants to buy? We all have the power to change the demand. We have the power to change the industry. Single-use plastics, they need to go. Materials need to change. But the, the issue of marine litter and ocean plastics will always remain if we don't change our throwaway culture or our littering culture. Because a biodegradable plastic bag will still choke a sea turtle. Ditching plastic bags, the plastic straws and the disposable coffee cups is needed. Raising awareness is also needed, but these are passive solutions and the awareness level is saturated. Solutions are needed. So this project, it started with a very lateral thought of, if we have rubbish bins on land, why not the water? The world needs more people thinking outside of the box with the more gimmicky or the more fantastical ideas, the better. Seabin technology is our first idea for thinking outside the box. 
Communities are also t uh, thinking outside of the box and they're also taking action. Flossie, an 11 year old girl from Dublin, raised enough money for two sea bins and donated them to a local marina. Pippa, 15 years old from New Zealand, she started a, a crowdfunding campaign and she's donating sea bins to the local marina. The yachting community of Palma, Mallorca raised $10,000 last week and they bought sea bins because they're sick of seeing crap floating around in the waterways. This is community action driving the change that we want. And people take notice, the media takes notice, and then the government takes notice because they have to. When we started this, I had no idea about marketing and I still don't really, but the thing is, I'm not a fan of marketing campaigns that portray dead animals and doom and gloom because the outcome of removing marine litter is we can enjoy cleaner oceans. Swim with fish, not with plastics. This is our, this is our catch cry. This is what we concentrate on, positive messaging. I mentioned earlier that the technology will not save the oceans. Um, so we, we set up an educational campaign that includes local schools, sports clubs and youth groups. We now have more than six countries involved. We also have a data collection program. We encourage the, our clients to monitor the amount of litter that is being captured by the sea bins. This is our base data. From this, we now know that the number one item that is in the waterways is cigarette butts. The second most common item is microplastics, followed by food wrappers. Since April this year, we now have 254 units that are in the water collecting on average three kilos of marine litter per day. The sea bins are removing three quarters of a ton of litter per day. Imagine if we had a thousand units or even 10,000 units in the water. Can you imagine the impact of that? One of the next steps is closing the loop on a circular economy. Because if, if plastic lasts forever, we should probably reuse it, right? So this will bring us one step closer to our goal, to live in a world without the need for sea bins. Thank you. <laughs>